Kenya, Honorable William Ruto, Governor Nanok, the Chair of the Council of Governors and the Governor of Turkana, Honorable Eugene Wamalwa, Cabinet Secretary for Devolution and the Assal Counties, our extremely generous host, the Governor of Kilifi County, Amson Kingi, Your Excellency, the Ambassador of the United States of America, Bob Godek, the Ambassador of Denmark, Mette Knudsen, the EU representative, all the development partners represented here, my brother, E.S. Mika Kovon, all the cabinet secretaries, my colleagues from the UN family who are all sitting around over here, and I know that all of you are driven by the same passion that you saw in the words of the Honorable Cabinet Secretary. Good afternoon, Salaam Alaikum wa Rahmatullah wa Barakatuh. Let me first start by, first of all, congratulating the vision of those who articulated the Kenyan Constitution. Because without that articulation, we would not have seen devolution. And someone was asking whose idea was this devolution, con uh, was this Asal County Conference. As a matter of fact, the passionate cabinet secretary for devolution summoned me and the EU representative during the meeting in Kakamega and said, how can we get all the Asal counties together? So really the architect and the planner of this whole initiative is the cabinet secretary for devolution. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Kenya announced the Big Four, and the United Nations family responded to the Big Four with the United Nations Development Assistance Framework, or the UNDAF, which is from 2018 to 2022. I commend the President of the Republic of Kenya and the Deputy President for the vision, for the articulation, for the direction where we can go to with the Big Four agenda. If there is one thing that can transform this country, and particularly the Asal counties, it is the Big Four. Why is universal health coverage so crucial? The fact is one million Kenyans get into poverty each year because of an out-of-pocket catastrophic health shock. That's precisely why we need universal health coverage. Why is it that last year in 2017 we saw one of the most degrading droughts ever which affected all the SL counties? The impact of the drought has had a huge impact also on the economy of the country and the repeated droughts are unacceptable, where Kenya can potentially be, to, to me when uh, CS Formalwa mentioned Turkana, Turkana has about 70 years of groundwater sitting about two kilometers down underneath. Can we pull that water out? Can we make sure that we open the biggest irrigation channels? Can we turn Turkana into the breadbasket for the rest of Africa? That's the potential. That's the potential that we have in this, in this country. So Kenya, needs to take advantage of one reality, ladies and gentlemen. By 2030, just by 2030, 12 years from now, agro-business in Africa is going to be $1 trillion worth. Let me repeat that, $1 trillion. If we have to be smart as a nation state, we might need to get ahead of the curve. And agriculture alone has been proven to pull the maximum number of people out of poverty. So let me assure you, my, the UN colleagues in FAO, in UNDP, in EFAD, in WFP, stand completely committed to make sure that we walk this journey with you in, in achieving food security in that aspect of resilience, which is crucial for us. The cross-border program that the, the cabinet secretary mentioned, Excellency, I just wanted to tell you that recently we had a visit from the ambassador in the UN on pre prevention of violent extremism and counter-terrorism issues. He was quite surprised that this is the first of a kind vision that this country had together with Ethiopia of starting this program in Moyale. Very soon after that, last Friday, uh, Cabinet Secretary Mamalwa, together with the Minister of Karamoja Affairs, have started working on a draft MOU in which we bring Uganda, Kenya, South Sudan, Ethiopia, and then gradually towards the Mandera Triangle of Somalia, Ethiopia, and Kenya. And finally, the ambassador of Kenya to Tanzania came and said, we need to start something similar in, in, in uh, on Kenya-Tanzania border. What does this essentially mean? It means few things. Number one, if we want to give momentum to the signing of the free trade agreement which took place in Rwanda, you need borders which are accessible, peaceful, which allows the free movement of goods, services and people. This is a start and Kenya is becoming that beacon of an example where it can potentially not just be expanded to other parts of Africa, perhaps to other parts of the world. And in this, I really want to take this opportunity to thank the US government, the European Union, the Nordic partners like Denmark, Sweden, Norway, who've really walked this journey with the UN family and the government of Kenya 
to move this agenda forward. Kenya today has a debt of $50 billion excellence, and that debt is increasing. Our smartest way of changing that paradigm is to bring in more and more public-private partnerships. Our smartest way is to move and bring more and more private sector investments into this country because that is how we will start to generate the jobs that are necessary. So again, on that count, the opportunities that universal health coverage in food security, in affordable housing, in manufacturing that we can, which basically means that we need to have the legislative environment and the enabling environment for the private sector to come in, which means we need to go from 130 in the ease of doing business to the top 20 in the ease of doing business, and it's very much possible in Kenya. Finally, youth of this country, today 1 million youth in Kenya join the workforce every year. That age group is 15 to 26. The median age of Kenya is 18, the median age of Africa is 19. We are the youngest continent right now in the world. The best thing for us is to be able to generate, rapidly generate those, that employment opportunity that we have in order for Kenya to reap a demographic dividend. Again, Excellency, the United Nations Development Assistance Framework is aligned to deliver for you precisely that. And finally today, we launched the UNDP country program document, which is the 2018 to 2022 country program document aligned to the government of Kenya's Big Four agenda. I would really request everybody to join us at 4.30 this afternoon to, to move this whole program that the UN, that UN Development Program needs to do with the government and the people of Kenya. God bless you, Mr. Deputy President, and God bless Kenya.